Hello friends! It's time for another episode of Spiritual Storytime! Yay! Today's story is Lord Brahma Steals the Calves and Cowherd Boys. It's a good one! You can find the story in the Krishna book, chapter 13. This story takes place right after Krishna killed the Agasura demon, which is like a giant snake that tried to eat all of the calves and boys. Right after that happens, Krishna and his friends decide to have lunch. And while they're having lunch, the calves are eating grass in the pastures, and they start to wander off really far, and then they disappear. And um, the cowherd boys are like really scared, and they're all worried and stuff. So they're all like, Krishna, Krishna, our calves are gone. And Krishna's like, don't you worry, kids. I'm going to go look for the calves while you guys continue to enjoy your lunch. He's so considerate. Thus, Lord Krishna immediately started to search out the calves in the caves and bushes. He searched in the mountain holes and in the forest, but nowhere could he find them. Oh, no. At the time when Agasura was killed and the demigods were looking on the incident with great surprise, Brahma, who was born out of the lotus flower growing out of the navel of Vishnu, also came to see. He was surprised how a little boy like Krishna could act so wonderfully. Although he was informed that the little cowherd boy was the supreme personality of Godhead, he wanted to see more glorified pastimes of the Lord. And thus he stole all the calves and cowherd boys and took them to a different place. Lord Krishna, therefore, in spite of searching for the calves, could not find them. And he even lost his boyfriends on the bank of the Yamuna, where they had been taking their lunch. Oh no! In the form of a cowherd boy, Lord Krishna was very little in comparison to Brahma. But because he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead... He could immediately understand that all the calves and boys had been stolen by Brahma. Hmm. Krishna thought, Brahma has taken away all the boys and calves. How can I alone return to Vrindavan? The mothers will be aggrieved. In order to satisfy the mothers of his friends, as well as to convince Brahma of the supremacy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he immediately expanded himself as the cowherd boys and calves. In the Vedas, it is said that the Supreme Personality of Godhead expands himself in so many living entities by his energy. He expanded himself to become exactly like the boys, who were of all different features, facial and bodily construction, and who were different in their clothing and ornaments and in their behavior and personal activities. In other words, everyone has different tastes. Really? I had no idea. Being individual souls, each person has entirely different activities and behavior. Yet Krishna exactly expanded himself into all the different positions of the individual boys. He also became the calves, who were also of different sizes, colors, activities, etc. This was possible because everything is an expansion of Krishna's energy thus expanding himself as the boys and calves in their individual capacities and surrounded by such expansions of himself krishna entered the village of vrindavan the residents had no knowledge of what had happened after entering the village vrindavan all the calves entered their respective cow sheds and the boys also went to their respective mothers and homes the mothers of the boys heard the vibration of their flutes before the en their entrance and to receive them, they came out of their homes and embraced them. And out of maternal affection, milk was flowing from their breasts. And they allowed the boys to drink it. However, their offering was not exactly to their boys, but to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who had expanded himself into such boys. This was another chance for all the mothers of Vrindavan to feed the Supreme Personality of Godhead with their own milk. Therefore, Lord Krishna gave not only Yashoda the chance of feeding him, but this time he gave the chance to all the elderly gopis. All the boys began to deal with their mothers as usual, 
and their mothers also, on the approach of evening, began to bathe their respective children, decorate them with tilak and ornaments, and gave them necessary food after the day's labor. The cows also, who were away in the pasturing ground, returned in the evening and began to call their respective calves. The calves immediately came to their mothers, and the mothers began to lick the bodies of the calves. These relations between the cows and the gopis with their calves and boys remained unchanged, although actually the original calves and boys were not there. Actually, the cow's affection for their calves and the elderly gopi's affection for the boys causelessly increased. Their affection increased naturally, even though the calves and boys were not their offspring. Although the cows and elderly gopis of Vrindavan had greater affection for Krishna than for their own offspring, after this incident, their affection for their offspring increased exactly as it did for Krishna. For one year continually, Krishna himself expanded as the calves and coward boys and was present in the pasturing ground. One day, when Krishna, along with Balaram, was maintaining the calves in the forest, they saw some cows grazing on the top of Govardhan Hill. The cows could see down into the valley where the calves were being taken care of by the boys. Suddenly, on sighting their calves, the cows began to run towards them. They leaped downhill with joined front and rear legs. The cows were so melted with affection for their calves that they did not care about the rough path from the top of Govardhan Hill down to the pasturing ground. They began to approach the calves with their milk bags full of milk, and they raised their tails upwards. When they were coming down the hill, their milk bags were pouring milk on the ground out of intense maternal affection for the calves, although they were not their own calves. These cows had their own calves, and the calves that were grazing beneath Govardhan Hill were larger. They were not expected to drink milk directly from the milk bag, but were satisfied with the grass. Yet all the cows came immediately and began to lick their bodies, and the calves also began to suck milk from the milk bags. There appeared to be a great bondage of affection between the cows and calves. When the cows were running down from the top of Govardhan Hill, the men who were taking care of them tried to stop them. Elderly cows are taken care of by the men, and the calves are taken care of by the boys, and as far as possible, the calves are kept separate from the cows, so that the calves do not drink all the available milk. Therefore, the men who were taking care of the cows on the top of Govardhan Hill tried to stop them, but they failed. Baffled by their failure, they were feeling ashamed and angry. They were very unhappy, but when they came down and saw their children taking care of the calves, they all of a sudden became very affectionate toward the children. It was very astonishing. Although the men came down disappointed, baffled, and angry, as soon as they saw their own children, their hearts melted with great affection. At once their anger, dissatisfaction, and unhappiness disappeared. They began to show paternal love for the children, and with great affection they lifted them in their arms and embraced them. They began to smell their children's heads and enjoy their company with great happiness. After embracing their children, the men again took the cows back to the top of Govardhan Hill. Along the way, they began to think of their children, and affectionate tears fell from their eyes. <laughs> so pretty. When Balaram saw this extraordinary exchange of affection between the cows and their calves, and between the fathers and their children, when neither the calves nor the children needed so much care, he began to wonder why this extraordinary thing happened. He was astonished to see all the residents of Vrindavan so affectionate for their own children, exactly as they had been for Krishna. Similarly, the cows had grown affectionate for their calves, as much as for Krishna. Balaram therefore concluded that the extraordinary show of affection was something mystical, either performed by the demigods or by some powerful man. It's not possible for the men and their mothers and the cows to have such great affection for their material children and offspring. No way! That's not supposed to happen. That's not possible. Parents can't love their kids that much as much as they love Krishna. No, 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 no. <laughs> Everybody's love for Krishna is greater than that of their own children. So, obviously, Balaram was like, hey, something's up. Otherwise, how could this wonderful change take place? 
he concluded that this mystical change must have been caused by Krishna, whom Balaram considered his worshipable personality of Godhead. He thought it was arranged by Krishna, and even I could not check its mystic power. Thus Balaram understood that all those boys and calves were only expansions of Krishna. At the request of Balaram, Krishna briefly explained the whole situation, how the calves and boys were stolen by Brahma, and how he was concealing the incident by expanding himself so that people would not know that the original cows, calves, and boys were missing. Now, because Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, one might ask, why didn't he just get them back from Brahma? That would have been miraculous and amazing. Why didn't he? Oh yeah, probably because he wanted to prove that even when he is disguised as somebody else, the love that people have for him will always be greater than that for us materialistic pieces of shit. Our parents, of course, have to love Krishna more than they love us because we are not deserving of a love that is greater than a love for Krishna. Our parents have to put service of Krishna above our needs because that would be the greatest expression of love for Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So while many of us were growing up, some of us were sent to gurukuls so that our parents wouldn't be burdened with having to raise a child and were free to do service for Krishna and service for Prabhupada. We were trained up to be good devotee kids I'm a little Vaishnav, come and play with me. When you come to my house, you won't find my family. They're off doing service, I'm in Gurukul. We don't really know each other, but it's all cool. We were not supposed to form our own opinions about things or decide what we wanted to do with our lives or if we even believed in Krishna. No, 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 no. We were supposed to be perfect little Vaishnavs. And if your kids are not pure devotees, not perfect little Vaishnavs, if they start doing drugs, that's terrible. If they start causing problems for the temple community, you have to kick them out of the house. They cannot cause problems for the temple community because your love for Krishna has to be greater than that of your kids. Therefore, you have to do what's best for the temple community. Perfect little Vaishnavs don't take drugs. Perfect little Vaishnavs don't have sex. Perfect little Vaishnavs don't try alcohol. <gasps> and perfect little Vaishnavs never eat meat, fish, or eggs. If your little Vaishnav is eating meat, fish, or eggs, kick them out. They're breaking the regulative principles. Your little Vaishnav has to be just like Prahlad, so perfect and pure and always thinking of Krishna and always preaching about Krishna. And even if your little Vaishnav is beaten and abused and anything like that, your little Vaishnav, if he's a perfect little pure devotee, is only going to take shelter of Krishna and allow all these things to just continue to happen because Krishna is going to come like Nishingadev and he's going to save your little Vaishnav anyway. And if Krishna doesn't show up to save your little Vaishnav, it's because your little Vaishnav is a bad kid and your little Vaishnav doesn't deserve Krishna's mercy. So it's totally okay if you abandon that little Vaishnav, because it wasn't good enough anyway. All that's important is your spiritual life. Bad little Vaishnavs are just distractions. They're just material attachments, and you can discard them, right?